Okay, let's begin by installing Debian. Uh, I've chosen Debian because it's just rock solid. It's free, there's no, um, there's no reason not to. And also, they've just released version nine. So now is as good a time as any uh, to install a new operating system. So let's begin by installing from the net installer. Um, it's quite a lot smaller than the traditional ISO file from Debian. It's, you know, those installers can sometimes be upwards of a gigabyte, the downloads, and this one's 300 megabytes in size. So due to the correct, correct architecture for your system, it's probably this one, AMD64. Download that, try and use BitTorrent if you can, as that will uh, not hurt anybody's bandwidth via HTTP. Okay, I'm gonna assume now that uh, you can download, pause the video, download the ISO, get your system booted up, and hopefully you will be at this stage. So we're gonna install Debian 9 Stretch. If you didn't know, by the way, Debian releases are named after Toy Story characters. I think one of the original developers was working on Toy Story at the time when they started, I, I, I might be an urban legend. Anyway. Let's get onto the install. So, first of all, we'll click on, or type on graphical install. Choose the language, well, obviously for me, English, UK, British, English. It's gonna load some installer components from the ISO file or the CD or the USB key or whatever you're installing this from. Do feel free to pause the video at any point, should you need to. This may take some time. Yes, it does. It feels like forever when you're just waiting. Okay, hostname Debian. Um, you can call this whatever you want. I'm just gonna leave, leave this alone as Debian. This will be the name of your server, so call it something creative. Domain name, um, probably not important at home. You can make, it even tells you here, if you're setting up a home network, you can even make something up. So go ahead, go nuts. I'll leave it blank. Uh, root password, so I'll just do a really short one for demos. Two characters. Create a new user. Excellent choice of name. And again, just a really short password, because it's not really gonna matter. I'm gonna delete this VM after I'm done. It's gonna detect the disks, it's gonna go into the partitioner stage. So this is where things can get a little bit complicated for the first time. I remember when I was installing Linux for the first time, reading about swap partitions and EXT2 and three and four and just thinking, what is going on? So um, I'd probably suggest if you're unfamiliar with this process, sticking with the guided, um, I would also probably suggest using an LVM. Um, this is a logical volume manager and this allows you to much more easily uh, extend and grow and shrink different volumes on your system uh, should you need to. Um, so if we go through here and have a guided setup, we'll use the entire drive. Um, again, this bit's up to you. So all files in one partition, it, it says, it's recommended for new users. Uh, you might want to think about a separate home partition um, as this would allow you to blow the main system away and not touch any of your user data. That could be very handy at some point in the future, but for the purposes of this video, I shall leave it as all files in one partition. So should we uh, write the changes? Yes, let's go for it. All right, so we've got an idea now of what the uh, automated installer is gonna do for us. And looks good. Yeah, we've got four gigabytes of swap. So what swap is, is if your RAM gets full, the system can just store stuff there temporarily. It's pretty much what the name says, <laughs> swap space. Um, boot partition, that's important. That's where the boot sectors and um, grub configurations and things like that get installed. Okay, so let's click continue. I think that looks good. You can change those things if you want to and uh, you know, it won't have any dramatic impact on your system. The only things to be aware of are if you're planning to use 
the root file system as the place that you're going to store your Docker app data. It might need to be large if you have a, a big Plex library or you're performing lots of downloads onto that system, onto that partition. Um, for my Epsilon server, I have, uh, I think, 128 gig SSD dedicated for um, Docker app data and the root file system of Debian itself. So it can chew through quite a lot of space if you have a big Plex library. When I say big, I mean mine's about 10 or 12 terabytes worth of stuff. Not the biggest, but it's, it's you know, reasonable size, so. Uh, yeah, let's, okay, let's click continue. Configure the package manager, yes, we probably wanna do that. And let's use the UK Debian mirrors, because that's where I am. Now this is the uh, net install section, I think, coming up. And this is where it downloads the four to 600 megabytes worth of packages that you didn't download in the ISO file. The latest versions of them, which is why I recommend getting a net installer. So that on the first boot, you don't have a massive apt upgrade to do. Uh, this is gonna take a little while, so I'm going to stop talking and speed up the footage. Okay, so this is the popularity contest package. It tells you here exactly what it does. If you want to participate, click yes. If you don't, click no. Aha, so this is an important thing to do. So for me, this, this server is gonna be uh, a, a headless system. I'm never gonna connect a display beyond when I'm installing the system. So I don't want anything on there that I don't need. So I definitely don't need a desktop environment. Um, so a desktop environment is this, it's, we know this is Windows obviously, but a desktop environment is the graphical user interface. So that there are different options in Linux. There's GNOME, all these different ones. And uh, the short version is you don't want any of these on a server. Um, you can have a web server, a print server, but to be honest with you, I'd, I'd probably just run either of these in a Docker if you need them. SSH server, this is really important because this is how we're going to administer the server. So make sure this spot this is ticked along with standard system utilities. Now the installer is asking whether you want to install the Grub bootloader. So Grub is the uh, black and white text that you see when the system starts up where you can select which version of the kernel that you want to boot from or which operating system sometimes. So if you're dual, dual booting between Windows and Linux for whatever reason, uh, Grub would be very important. For most people it's something that they just ignore, um, but it, it's definitely required. So uh, click on install Grub to the uh, master boot record, click yes and move on. Um, make sure you select the right device here. If you have still have your data drives connected during the install process, I didn't mention at the beginning, but uh, it's mentioned in the text of the article, disconnect them just in case. Anyway, select the primary boot device for me, that's dev SDA, click continue, and the installer will install Grub for you. Excellent, so installation is now complete. Let's click continue. The system will now reboot. This is where you remove your media and we boot into Debian for the first time. Excellent. So according to my timer, that's uh, roughly 11 real time minutes that that's taken. It's quite a quick process. <laughs> when I remember installing Linux a few years ago, it took rather a lot longer than that. Um, so now we're gonna make sure that SSH works. Uh, just one last thing to do. So uh, get your IP address by typing IP space A and you can see that my IP address for this system is um, 192.168.1.213 That's come up on a different window which isn't helpful for you. So let's click on here, uh, log in as Alex and the short password and hopefully 
we can get root, we can, brilliant. So there we are, Debian is now installed. I'm gonna pause the video for a moment and be back shortly.